So remember, we were in, in we are going through that three stage process as part of step number two. So now that we've uploaded this file, we can save and continue. Again, this is the user, right? Step number three of the submit an article stay is essentially providing metadata. Now you see, the idea behind metadata is simple, right? I'm sure you've noticed that uh, when you're on, uh, on Google Scholar, right? If I, if I check for, um, if I check for uh, Mr. Msinge's entries, for instance, what, what on, in Google, if I search for him in Google Scholar, you notice that there are some articles that are associated with, with, with him, right? These things that you're seeing here, like this, the title, the things in green here, the authors, and this snippet of text here. This is what is called metadata. Okay, it's just auxiliary information. Data about data as it's commonly called, right? But it's meant to com comprehensively describe a document. The reason why we're able to see these things associated with Mr. Msenge is because wherever this journal is coming, wherever this article was published, in this case it was, I think, in Wiley, or, or, or it was published by Wiley, Wiley or something, um, somebody, or maybe it was Mr. Msenge when, when he was submitting this article, they entered this information, the title, you know, the authors and all those things. This is what we are seeing here. Okay? So whatever example article you're using, just add, if you want, you can be specific, you can add the actual article of, of, of the article title of the article, but also you, you can just, you know, add something hypothetical, we'll delete these things afterwards. We're just using this as an example. We will not publicly, I will not make them publicly available. In my case, what I have uploaded is to do with uh, with this OJS. I'll call this uh, <clears throat> online publishing using OJS. I'll just call this School of Nursing Sciences Online Publishing using OJS. That's the title. There's also the subtitle. You know how sometimes, I think you know what the subtitle is. When you have a title that has a full column uh, ahead of it, you can choose, um, the authors can choose to provide a subtitle here. Although in some instances, what people do is, as part of the title, put the full column, and then you have the subtitle somewhere there. Um, but again, I'll skip this. this is the reason why it's, it's not mandatory. You notice the title has an asterisk, this purple star here. It signals that this is a mandatory field. So the, the user will not be able to save and continue unless they've provided this, um, um, this value. And then you, you also have the abstract, right? So in my case, I'll just add something hypothetical. I'll just say um, hands-on, hands-on uh, walk, walk through on how to use open journal system platform to submit, review, and publish journals. Okay, so, so the author would enter the abstract. Hopefully you are entering the abstract. And then, um, under list of contributors, con a contributor is anybody who who, have, who provided input to the, the, the article that is being submitted to be published in this journal itself. In most instances, there will be multiple authors. Sometimes it's not uncommon to have just one author. But the idea here is the author would specify all the names of all the people that contributed. I'll give you an example. Currently, by default, the user that, has, that is submitting the article will be added as a contributor by default. If you are submitting this article on behalf of an author who has failed to log in, what you would do is you contextualize this and then you delete the contributor here. But in this case, because I'm one of the authors, I'll leave myself just like that. And then just to, to make this more intuitive so that people are able to follow, 
I'll assume that maybe Mr. Msenge was, was a contributor, was the author to this article that I'm submitting for review to this journal, right? I'll just say add contributor, and then I'll provide the names here. Emmanuel Msenge. Emmanuel Msenge. And then I have the country, which is Zambia. Um, uh, I guess in nursing in, in, in the nursing field maybe you don't have uh, you know uh, suffixes I know that uh, in certain fields like medical doctors you have a doctor name and then afterward M is it MCB and all those things this is where you have the suffix um, and then the uh, I'm the engineer Dr. Piri oh yes <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> um yeah, I don't know about nursing if you have those things, but but anyways, um, so so you notice that these fields here by default these fields are optional, but if you want you can make these mandatory for your journal. You notice some of these fields don't have like uh, asterisks, right? Like user details, for I mean the suffix, the URL, the orchid affiliation, they don't have an asterisk, meaning that an author can omit these fields and just save this. If you decide to make it mandatory, then what you're signaling to the user is you must provide these details before you can submit your article. And, and this is important because increasingly you agree with me that when you submit articles to certain journals out there, you'll be required to submit an ORCID number. So what you can do is for your journal, you can configure to say, we want all the authors that are submitting articles to our journal to have ORCID IDs. So they would provide the ORCID number there. Uh, I know I have an ORCID number. I memorized it myself, but um, I'll just come here and just uh, copy it. But these are these are all optional fields for now in your journal. Okay. Um, and then the URL will just be a, a, a hyperlink. Um, most academics will have will have some some URL that points to, is it maybe where people can find more information? Uh, by default, what, not by default, what most people do is they use a Google Scholar profile as a URL. But in our case, a reminder that we have UNSA, um, we have UNSA profiles, is it? Each one of us has an UNSA profile specific to your school, so you can use that, right? Uh, in my case, I also have a profile on uh, our research group website, so I can use this as, um, as a URL, right? So I could come here and just copy this and just paste it as a URL. Again, this is not mandatory, so if a user doesn't have these things, they can leave them. Um, affiliation, in my opinion, should be mandatory, right? You want to know which university or which hospital or which organization um, this particular contributor comes from. Uh, by the way, the details I'm entering here are for Mr. Msenge, so I shouldn't have been entering mine here. I'll delete this, but I know his affiliation is University of Zambia. If you want as well, by the way, some of these can be switched off. So you can configure the, the journal that has been created for you in such a way that these things don't even appear. If you think the suffix is not important for your journal and the URL, you can disable this so that they don't appear here. If you think an author providing their biography is not important for you, you can disable these things as well. All right? So in this particular case, this is Emmanuel Musenge is... Uh, a lecturer and researcher at the University of Zambia or something. Okay? And then more importantly, right, you notice at the bottom here there's a, a mandatory field that says contributor role. You want to specify how exactly do they contribute to this. Whether an author, maybe they provided, you know, transcription services or something. For now, it's just two options. You can configure this so that you add other options. Maybe there will be data collection and all that. Uh, in most instances, the role will almost always be that they were a co-author or something. So you choose author. And then you specify at the bottom here, the author will be required to specify if that particular you know, contributor you've added, uh, are they supposed to be the point of contact? You know how you have, uh, you're supposed to provide cor correspondence, uh, is it a correspondence email, a person who will be contacted 
in the event that somebody reads your interest in research and they want to reach out. Um, so I can choose to say maybe I want you know, a manual to be a principal contact. And then also you get to decide if you want the author details to be browsable. You, you see, if in, in some instances, you would have a number of authors that would be submitting articles to multiple issues in that particular journal. To make it a lot easier for people to find other related research, maybe you may choose to have their details browsable. So I'll tick it. Okay? Uh, once that is done, I'll say save. Now when I save, what you notice is that the details associated with Emmanuel Msengo will come here. Um, again, this is done by, um, what do you call this? The, the authors, right? And the onus is also on the author to make sure that the order of the contributors is representative of what is in the actual PDF document. Uh, we all know that order of authors is important here. Um, if the author realizes that the order is different, they can always uh, reorder this by dragging and dropping like this. So Emmanuel in this case would become, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the first author and that would be the second author like that. Okay. Um, and then again, you notice here, right? Somewhere at the bottom here. So I've just, it, I was still adding, um, we're adding metadata. And we, we were adding metadata associated with a contributor. There are instances where you can have maybe even five authors, right? We were just looking up uh, uh, an example of an article that was co-authored by Emmanuel here. You notice that uh, I think in this particular article, let's check here how many authors there were, but there are quite a number of authors, more than two. So what that means is that uh, you would have to enter metadata for all of these four authors, right? So you'd come here, if, if, if this was a manual uploading, uh, uh, uploading or submitting this article for review in this particular journal, they would have to, by default, their details would be added, but they would have to also add um, <clears throat> Charles Michello's details by going to add contributor. Once done, you add Boyd Mdenda's details by going here, and then you add Alexi's details here as well. Once you are comfortable that, once the author is comfortable that they've added um, all the contributors, all the co-authors, they can scroll down here and provide things like keywords. Okay? Um, I'll just say nursing. Um, maybe University of Zambia or something. Um, um, and then I'll just say online publishing. And then that's, that's it. So you'd have added metadata. Now you notice that there are certain key metadata elements that authors are expected to add here. You can expand on this if you wish, you know, but there's titles, there's the abstract, there's the list of all authors, they're called contributors, and then there's keywords. Under contributors, there are specific elements that you're supposed to provide. The name, the email, the country, right? And optional URL, ORCID, affiliation, and your biography. And an indication of what their role was. Hopefully this is making sense. Um, I'm going to pause here before I save so that we can have people maybe share their thoughts or comments about this. I'm, I'm hoping that you are... Um, you are actually adding this because it will only make sense if you add these things. And in fact, the next stage, when you are going to the review workflow, what I would want to suggest is when we have the meeting next, we will exchange. So if I submitted this article as an author, one of you would have to, to be added as a reviewer to my article. So it will make sense if you're actually doing this uh, as part of this hands-on walkthrough. All right, uh, unless if there are any thoughts, I'll, I'll, I'll ask that you click on save and continue.